Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have the same structure, the same bridge that we've seen before. And before we tried to find the, the tension or the compression on each of the members on the bridge by simply starting on one side and working our way all the way through, typically using a method of triangles. But what we're going to do here is simply find the force on a single member. We're going to find the force on the member between C and D by using what we call the method of sections. So what we do here is we draw a dashed line to the bridge and we're going to take this section right here and put it on the side. Notice that we realize there will be a force between H and G, which we indicate there, a force between D and G, which we indicate there, and a force between D and C, which we indicate there. That's what we're trying to find. Then also there's some existing forces. We have a 6,000 Newton load right here at H and there'll be a supporting force right here called F sub E at point E. We don't know yet what that is, we'll still have to calculate it. But you can actually take any section of the bridge and then use the sum of the forces in the X direction, the sum of the forces in the Y direction, and the sum of the torques or moments about any point on the bridge to find individual members or the forces on individual members. So let's go ahead and show you how that works. First, what we want to do is figure out the force right here at E, because we're going to need that as a known quantity in our section that we took off. Realize here that this here represents this section right there. We're going to use the moments about point A. The sum of the moments at point A must equal zero. And let's add them all up. So these will cancel out because those two forces go right through the moment, the point about which we find the moment. Here we have a what we call clockwise moment, and that would be negative, negative 6,000 multiplied times the distance, which is 3 meters, minus 6,000 for this force right here, multiplied times 6 meters, negative 6,000 multiplied times 9 meters, and then plus, because this will cause a counterclockwise motion or torque, and we get F sub E, multiply times the total distance from there to there, which is 12 meters. And all that adds up to zero. So therefore, we can solve for F sub E. F sub E, therefore, is equal to, we have, when we move this over to the other side and we turn the equation around, these all will become positive. This will stay positive when we move this to the other side of the equal sign. We get a positive 6,000 times 3 plus a positive 6,000 times 6 plus a positive 6,000 times 9, and the whole thing divided by the coefficient in front of F sub E, which is 12. Simplifying this, that's uh, 3, 6, that's 6,000 times 18, divided by 12, and 18 divided by 12 is 3 halves, which means that the force of E is equal to 9,000 newtons. And this then is equal to 9,000 newtons, which means we can put that in here, that's equal to 9,000 newtons. Now this is how the method of sections work. If I put my pivot point right here and I find the moment about point G, it will cancel out the force FDG and FGH, because I don't know what those two forces are, so I can eliminate them by, pick, by taking my pivot point right there. These are two known forces, and that's the only unknown force I'm looking for. I could then use this technique, the sum, of the moments about point G must add up to zero. And let's add up all the forces, all the moments, I should say. So here we have the 6,000 Newton force that causes a clockwise motion. That's minus 6,000 Newtons. Multiply times this distance, which again would be the same distance as there, which is three meters. And we have a plus because that causes a counterclockwise motion, 9,000 Newtons. Multiply times the distance here, which is six meters. And then we have this unknown force, which also causes a counterclockwise motion that would be plus FCD. And the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point right here, that would be this distance here, which is a distance of four meters, multiplying this times four. Which means that if I then move all this to the other side, this becomes negative, that, that becomes positive. I turn the equation around, I get four times the force CD is equal to, this becomes positive, 6,000 times 3 minus, this becomes negative when it goes to the other side, the equal sign, 9,000 times 6. And that means that FCD is equal to 18,000 minus 54,000 
divided by 4. 18,000 minus 54,000, that would be 36,000. Divided by 4, and 4 goes into 36. Looks like 9 times, that's 9,000 newtons. And notice this should be a minus and a minus. This is negative, so that's bigger than this. I get a minus 9,000 newtons, which means that the force is actually in the opposite direction. The way you usually draw the forces on the section that you remove from the total structure, you tend to show the forces as if they are tension forces. But then if you get a negative answer, then it's actually a compression force. So you start out by drawing the vectors as if they're tensions, but if you get a negative value, like in this case for FCD, then what that means is you actually have a compression on beam between C and D on the member there. And so the final answer is the force CD is equal to 9,000 newtons. That's the magnitude of force. And instead of having a tension, we have a force of compression on that beam. And that's how you figure out the force on any member on the bridge. Simply cut off a section right through the member that you're trying to measure. You then draw the remnant of that section and all the forces emanating from the points, from the joints right there. Since you're looking for FCD, you put the pivot point there, eliminating those two unknowns, leaving you just with one unknown that you can solve using the sum of the moments. And that's how we use the method of sections to find the force on any member on a bridge or a structure and know whether it's tension or compression force. That's how it's done.